welcome back to Valve Ventures. Quick one for you today. I had a problem. The foam machine that I have to spray the building with requires 28 CFM of airflow, consistent airflow, in order to be able to run the main pump. My original air compressor that I bought was the Roll Air gas powered, and it was 14 CFM. I discovered later that I needed 28, so I picked up the Roll Air 60 gallon, five horsepower electric air compressor. And the theory was that I'd parallel the two together, have 30 CFM and have just enough to do what I need. My problem was in setting up the new air compressor, the off-grid power system here with the twin Solark 12K hybrids and the four AES Discover batteries wouldn't start the air compressor. What would happen is that when I'd go to start the air compressor, I'd get about a half a rotation out of the motor and the compressor before the entire system blacked out because of the high inrush. Air compressors and any other kind of compressor, refrigeration, AC compressors as well, but mostly air compressors are notorious for having incredibly high inrushes on them because of the, the large reciprocating mass, the large heavy flywheels. And fortunately, most air compressors have unloaders so that they're not starting under full load. That helps a lot. I did test the wiring, it was fine. I did manage to actually get this air compressor to start on my Yamaha 7200 generator, which at 80% operating capacity where it likes to run is about 6kW worth of power. When running, this air compressor was supposed to use about 3.2 to 3.6kW. So well within the means. What impressed me was that the generator could actually start the air compressor fine with a peak of 7,200 watts while, is, while my system couldn't. And in theory, I have two 12K inverters, so 24,000 watts available. The generator was able to start the system mainly because you have a big heavy flywheel in it and the stator and everything running so that it can get over, it can get past that initial inrush, that initial attempted locking of the rotor, if you will. And then once it flicks it over, everything's fine. The, the Solark system, while it is an incredible system, puts out a massive amount of power, can actually handle a really large inrush. It's not a transformer based inverter. It's a solid state electronic style. So it doesn't have the built up storage, the built up capacitance to have a really hard inrush start easily on it. That said, I'm obviously not gonna change the solar system. I could have gotten around this problem by adding one or two more Solark 12K hybrids, which to be fair, I actually plan on doing some point because while we're off grid, we're in the middle of the forest, there's no power lines brought to this property. There, there are some within a half a mile, but for the cost that it would take me to run the power here, I could just build a massive solar system and never have an electric bill. In the short term, the cost of adding one or two more Solarks and the appropriate amount more batteries is cost prohibitive. And since I'm trying to get this place 12 month functional as fast as possible, the more money I put into materials for the building, the better. Which brings me to my solution. Basically what I needed was a way to make the air compressor start softly, to slow it down. So it's not just an instantaneous bang, try to come to full speed. Hence the massive amount of inrush trying to, it's like your car, trying to take your car from a dead stop to full speed as fast as possible takes a huge amount of power. In this case, wattage, kilowatts. I needed to reduce that to take the shock off the system. To do that, what I ended up doing was convert it to three phase, the motor. Because with motor, three phase motors, you have all kinds of options for soft start, variable speed, all kinds of control options that let you manipulate how the motor starts. That brings up an obvious problem, an obvious question. How do you run a three phase motor if you only have single phase power? Generally, what would happen is if you just hooked it up direct, you'd have what's called a, a brownout condition or you drop a leg. So you'd have a single phase instead of three phase. So you have two hot legs instead of three going to the motor. This will burn up the windings and cost you a six or seven or thousand six or seven hundred maybe a thousand dollar motor so 
Here is the five horsepower Century three phase motor. I picked it up in Honolulu and shipped it over here because I discussed it with a friend of mine that I have dealt with for the last 30 years or so. And he said, yep, no problem. This one will match the RPM, 3,450. Uh, 3, It'll match the frame, so it's a direct bolt on. And by doing that, I don't have to change the drive pulley. I don't have to redo the mounting. I just had to pull the old motor off and bolt the new one in place, set the tension, swap the pulley, or set, swap the pulley, set the tension, and we're good to go. Then came the fun part. So we have our three-phase motor. We have our single-phase power. This is a variable speed drive. Now, granted, this is not a high-end, very super expensive, millions of capabilities, American-made, German-made, fancy variable speed drive. This is an inexpensive, for lack of a better term, I'll call it Chinesium, variable speed drive off of Amazon. My theory was proof of concept. I've always known that this would work, but I've never actually done it. So I wanted to make sure that it would work on something that didn't cost a fortune. Bon as a bonus, if an inexpensive inverter works and it lasts forever, even better. I'll have a link to this one in the description down below. I'm probably gonna butcher the name, the brand name of this one, but I wanna say it was like a Huang Huan Yang. It actually had some really good reviews. The trick is knowing what size you need and being able to set it up. The manual is actually pretty good, but it's written for somebody with VFD experience, or at least an electronics or electrical background. There are great tutorial videos about it that help though. There are a couple errors in, I don't remember if it was the quick start manual or in the main manual, as far as where the input power connects. The first thing to know is that in order to size a VFD to run on single phase, and provide three phase power is that you want a larger variable speed drive than your motor requires. This is a five horse motor, about three and a half kW. I played it safe and went with a 10 horsepower variable speed drive or rated a seven and a half kW. I think I could have gotten away with a five kW or a seven and a half horse inverter, which would have saved $20, $30. But for the price difference, I opted to go safe and go bigger and it has worked out great. As I said, this was off Amazon. I don't have an affiliate store. I'm not big and fancy and monetized and all, but at the same time, when I find things that work, I am more than happy to share. So I'll have a link to this. The motor itself, you can pick up at any of your local motor supply shops. It's just a century three phase, five horsepower motor, if you need to do this. Or Marathon makes, and other brands make as well. The motor I replaced was a WEG, and honestly not the most thrilled with it. This variable speed drive can support either single or three phase input. I obviously have it on single phase. I've used some seriously oversized cord because I wanted to be able to move this around the shop floor and basically put it on a 50 foot cord. The instructions or quick start guide, something referenced single phase power being connected to terminals R and S. So where the big power, big black wire is, it would be the empty terminal next to it. That's not where it goes. Your single phase power coming from your panel needs to go between R and T. So you have a space in the middle. Over on the other side of the main power terminals, you have terminals U, V, and W. These are your three phase output to the motor. Nothing else should be on them. One other thing to bear in mind is that you want the variable speed drive, variable frequency drive for VFD, to have full control over the motor. It needs to start and stop the motor. You don't want any other controls in the three phase line going anywhere between it and the motor. So in order to get the air compressor to control on the pressure switch, 
I removed all the original factory controls and basically it's just a pressure switch. When the pressure goes up, the switch opens. When the pressure drops, it closes. That's a dry contact. I rewired it so that I have a pair of wires going across a single pole of the switch and then they come back down here to terminals S1 and common in the back. This gives the controller the closure that it needs so that it knows when to start and stop the compressor. Besides being able to start in a dry contact closure, you can actually manually control it off the keypad. You can hook a analog input, or excuse me, an analog output to it, a zero to 10 volt, or I think there was other settings possibly as well. If you wanted to actually ramp the speed up and down, you can do that. You can run anything you want off this, as long as it's a motor, three phase motor, and the right size. The instructions actually give all the parameters needed for programming in order to make it do essentially whatever you want it to. And as far as going through the inverter, I'm not going to do that now. That can be a separate one. If you're interested in doing something like this, you want to see it and you don't like the tutorials you see, I can set up and I can you throw, throw a question, throw a comment down and below. If you want me to make a video going over the parameters of this, I can do that. That's not a problem. I just need to know if you want to do it. But it's actually very easy to do on this. Um, one thing to bear in mind, this particular one showed up default as 50 hertz. That needs to change before you run the motor. And since we're, well, I'm in Alaska, or this particular system is in Alaska, everything in the United States runs on 60 hertz. You need to change the maximum frequency. And there's really good tutorials from the manufacturer how to do that right off the get-go. Other than that, it's been wonderful. So I guess all we can do now is show you how it's working. When you see the screen flashing, this is the frequency or the speed. So consider zero stopped and 60 hertz full speed. I actually can speed up and slow down this compressor, but basically since it's a displacement compressor, I want max volume to be able to refill the tank as fast as possible. So I just leave it at 60 hertz. While it's flashing, it's in standby. It's waiting for the signal to tell it to run. I have that all set through the pressure control. So as soon as I flip this, you'll get to see and hear it start up. So there you have it, basically solving a problem and getting magic voodoo, uh, something from nothing. We created a third leg of power in order to run a three phase motor in order to solve a problem. We were able to run a five horsepower belt driven 60 gallon air compressor, 16 CFM on a battery supplied solar off grid shop. Can't ask for better than that. To go a step further, I did ask for better than that. The other thing that I've done is created three phase power from single phase again for some chain fall hoists. I ended up picking up some Dayton two ton three phase chain fall hoist from a friend of mine. So as you can see, I push the down button. Chain starts running down. I believe this is rated at eight feet per minute. So it's a nice slow controlled descent and ascent. That's the electronic brake in there. There's steels and frictions that lock together with an electric brake or electric solenoid actuated brake to keep it. That's what makes it a hoist rather than a winch. So it can't free fall and break loose. The 
the difference between these hoists, I have two of them, and the air compressor is these don't have a huge inrush. They don't have a massive starting torque required. They're running through a gear reduction box. And because of that, plus the controls in them make it a little bit awkward to use a variable speed drive. It could be done, it's just not worth the effort. I went for a more economical solution using a digital phase splitter. Basically, it's just a converter. It, it just takes single phase power, creates a third leg while the motor's running. And in doing so, I think they're $90, $95 a piece, give or take, on Amazon again. And I'll, I'll have the link down in the description. But they've been great. In testing on one of these back in Hawaii, I did let the magic smoke out, but I was cycling it like crazy to tune the brake in one of the hoists and basically overloaded it, overheated it. But that's that. I have three applications where I'm taking single phase power off grid, solar on occasion, backup generator, and creating three phase power. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful. If you would like to know any more in-depth detail about the digital phase splitters or the variable speed that I'm using and some of its programming, feel free to leave a question, leave a comment down below. I'll respond just as fast as I see them. I try to get them right away. Unfortunately, sometimes life gets in the road. We're not up here full time yet. Uh, this is actually the tail end of a two week family trip. We've been hiding in the forest playing and decompressing. I have a few more little videos I'll put up as updates after this one. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked it, be sure to hit that thumbs up down below. It really does help and I'm trying to grow this channel. If you want to see more content of what we're doing to produce what we need in the forest, give it a subscribe. Share with your friends, anybody that might be interested. It all helps. It's all free. It takes less than a second of your time and helps get the word out. That said, I'm Ryan. You're watching Vowel Ventures. Hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.